There's another big deal that was reported, though. Liverpool boys. Reportedly, you've made a 55 million euro bid for Chuameni. And Real Madrid are prepared to let him go for 80 million. Can you see this getting done? Can you see this getting done, JJ? Hell no. <laughs> I, 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 the disparity between the two, like the, the, the I mean, the, the fee that the Real Madrid are requesting and what Liverpool have bid, rumoured 55 million euros, is so far apart. I mean, that's laughable. That's laughable. I mean, they bought him for 80. So what they're going to be making a 40 million pound? Real Madrid aren't going to do that business. It's just, it's just logic. Real Madrid, uh, uh, their net spend is like eight million, if I believe, in the last six seasons, something ridiculous like that. That, in terms of from a business standpoint, Real Madrid have executed outgoings and signings really, really, really well. They're not going to let Schwemini go for fifty million. So unless Liverpool go and find an extra 30, 40 million to kind of tempt Real Madrid, I just don't see that happening at all. At all, we had an opportunity to get him for eighty million last year. We didn't do it because we were holding out on the Barrett and on the Bellingham deal. Uh, we ended up getting Darwin Nunes instead because Bellingham wasn't available. And now here we are, man. Um, looks like we're scrambling right now, to be fair, Terry. Um, I, I don't know what's going on. This is supposed to be a rebuild. But look, it's early in the window. Um, yeah, we just got to have hope at this point. I, I don't know what G's got to say, but yeah, man. Go on, G. <laughs> <laughs> you said it, bro. Like 55 million, 80 million. We all know Liverpool ain't spending that kind of money, even for a player, in my opinion, that they would want, purely because we've got so many other areas that we need to sort out, you know, in the pitch. So for us to then say we're going to buy someone like a Chiumeni, I'd be super, that'd be one of the, for me, be one of the shocks of the summer window, if Liverpool were to even go out and sign someone like him, purely because of the amount of money that we actually do spend. On top of then, we still need to potentially buy two, like we need, what, two more midfielders, you need a couple of defenders, they might potentially be looking at someone to play in the forward area. Like we're already um, penny pinching as it is currently. We're, we're we're already looking at the deal for Kefra and Turan, for example, and that's looking a bit like we don't want to get in a bidding war. Do you want him or do you not want him? So to then say then Chiromani, you're going to then go splash out eighty million euros on that guy. I don't see that happening. I think what you're going to see from Liverpool this summer is a lot of no. All of the players that Liverpool will sign will be no player who moves the needle, but there'll be potential. There'll be decent players that could potentially be good players, you know, in the future. But if we're talking about players like Chiumeni's level, Liverpool, in my opinion, don't have that kind of source at this current moment in time to go out and get those kind of players. And I don't think we would. And I don't think Jurgen Klopp actually would go and get these kind of players unless his team was in a set position where we only needed one player in the summer. But where we need minimum four new players, that's not happening. It's funny with Liverpool because I felt a few weeks back, you know, you signed... Um, McAllister, and you were then linked with Kone and Karam, and it looked, it looked the way it sounded by the media, and even journalists that don't really cover Liverpool were saying, for once, a lot of information is coming out. It looks like they're acting quickly, but it is it is as dry as a, a camel's proverbial. Like right now, the news has dried up. There's nothing going on, and we're seeing Arsenal get criticised for you know, underbidding for players, but they're in for four people right now. Man United have been in for two or three people and getting more criticism than Liverpool. Yes, you've signed someone, but you need such a big overhaul this summer. I don't know about rivals here, Babs, like Liverpool are a team that everyone expects to be straight back in the top four next year. Do you think they're doing the business that warrants it, that, that makes you believe they'll be back in the top four next season? I think one thing Liverpool have is with Klopp, their system has proven itself that it can fight with Man City. So it's just about finding the right personnel. But you're right, in terms of ambition compared to what you have at Arsenal and United and so on and so forth, and then of course City themselves, it doesn't seem like they have the level of ambition right now coming from the ownership, which of course is their problem, uh, to, to go and fight one of those teams there. Um, the, the signings they're making could be sm uh, smart, by the way. You know, Certain players that fans might not know of, they might be the right choice for them. And that's what got them you know, to where they were in the first place. But I think Liverpool's team is in a really like big crossroads right now because players like Salah, Van Dijk, how many more years do they have of, of elite level? Is this like the last couple of years? And when, once that you know goes over, how do you replace those guys? So that's why in terms of you know looking as an Arsenal fan to Liverpool, I see if they guys get if they get the right profiles and they could fight you know other teams. But I just don't know if their owners would ever allow them to truly compete consistently again and again. Like like you know United have done. Or United will try to do as well. Arsenal are trying to do now. Newcastle themselves. I think Newcastle will be there next season again. And and. 
and Man City, you know, if they get Rice, for example, then what we do in here? What's, what's the point of even playing against them? Go ahead, G. Go ahead, Jen. It's your club. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm vent, not going to ask back. Vent and give us everything. <laughs> no, no, I'm not even going to vent. It's just all, all I wanted to ask is obviously, you mentioned, you know, Klopp's tactics, and you're right. Obviously, they. they a couple of seasons ago, we were really, really dominant, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. In terms of the profile of players, when people speak about this, do we ever really look into context? If you look at all the players, bar Fabinho and I'm going to say Naby Keita, I think those are the only two players. What player did Liverpool sign and were ready to actually win today? Were all Virgil the players not just project players? No, we didn't win straight away when Virgil van Dijk came in. No, we but he wasn't a project player, was he? No, but they're not players that I'm saying are going to come in and actually win today. You can potentially, if you want to throw Virgil van Dijk, I'll give you Virgil van Dijk, if you want to throw that in. So three out of the, what's that, eight, nine, ten, eleven players that we've signed in terms of first team who've gone on to win Allison, things yeah. Under, under, yeah, yeah, under, under, under Jurgen Klopp. The rest of them, the Robertsons, the Gini Wijnaldums, the Salas, the Mones, uh, who else have we signed in that time? Uh, James Mono was obviously there prior to that. All of these players, even Firmino coming in prior to um, Jürgen Klopp being it, none of these players that we're signing, which is not a problem, none of these players are players that are coming in to win today. Most of these players that you're that we're signing, like they're all looking at Kefren Turam, Alexis McAllister, Gravenberg, Kone, uh, uh, Gabri Viega, good players, absolutely um, 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 really good um, potential players. None of those players scream to me, you know what, they're coming into a team to... Really, I think someone mentioned it, I think, um, in regards to Arsenal. Are they coming in to move the needle? None of them move that needle. I'm not saying you can't go out there and sign those players. Of course, everybody needs potential players. But what's wrong with them, as an example, getting a true main, someone who is actually ready to win today, potentially looking at a Barella, someone who is, I'm not saying get both of them. I'm just saying you might just get one and then maybe you get a Kefra and Turam as an example in terms of the kind of profile of players. Because what you end up with is a bunch of project players we're waiting two, three years. <laughs> so we're going to just miss these next two, three years. Let Arsenal do their thing. Let Man City do their thing. Let Chelsea do their thing. Manchester United do their thing. Let Newcastle do their thing. And pray in two, three years' time, we have the same impact that we had two, three years ago. It's now four years since you won the Premier League. People don't want to speak on that because yeah. it's so recent. It's no, four no, years it's, now. It's, it's thing, but recent, recent turns into a long time. Like Man United get really exactly. good. Man, Arsenal get ridiculed for going 19 years, a long time. Man United's been a decade. Chelsea's has been going, they're going into seven years. Mm -hmm. And it's it's suddenly like you don't win it next year, the year after. Suddenly you're going six, seven, eight, and it built into a long time again. And yeah, Liverpool's been funny. Go on, you were gonna say something, Mo. Sorry, go on. Yeah, I have I have this 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 feeling about Liverpool. This is the way I look at Liverpool. I feel that Liverpool are putting all their eggs in one basket, which is Jurgen Klopp, assuming that he's gonna do wonders with every single player that he signed. Thank you. And I saw from looking from outside that when the benchmark is raised in the Premier League, because if you look at Arsenal, even Arsenal signing Kai Havertz, going for Declan Rice, they might sign another uh, Timber as well. Man United are looking, Mason Mount, it doesn't matter if it's good or not, but the benchmark is raised. And even look at the Caicedos and the Enzos at Chelsea. I thought that Liverpool would raise that, will go up with them, but it doesn't look like it. It looks like everybody else is raising the benchmark while Liverpool still... We want to operate the same way. We're content with what we have. And we just want to keep going forward, assuming that we're going to get the same results while the other teams around him are trying to improve. Even Newcastle, catching yeah. up to Man City. Yeah. And it's astonishing that nobody at Liverpool Football Club are seeing this, unless it's all about business, as we all agreed before, that these owners only care about revenue, minus expenses, equal profit. That's it. It's, yeah, it's that's the, the owners. It's the owners. That, that's yes. what I was going to talk about, the owners. I was actually going to... Sorry, Jerry, just a quick point. I was going to talk about the owners because, like, I know what you guys are saying in terms of the calibre of players that you bring in because Liverpool don't really bring in, like, ready-made players. But with Klopp, he's been here, what, nearly... Is it 10 years he's been here? Seven. He's been here, yeah, seven, seven years, right? And at the start of his career at Liverpool, he brought in, you know, Mane, your Robertson, um, mm -hmm. Salah, and he's turned these guys world-class. But now, do you think it's the right tactic, like Mo said, to like, start the, the whole process again? And have to start developing nope. these players because Klopp is he going to be here for another five years? You know, during that period. So, I think you're going to have this problem whilst FSG are here because they clearly don't want to spend. Um, but again, you know, these players need to get developed. Like you guys have said, you're not going to move the needle. You're not going to spend eighty million on a too many. So, 
people that are kind of saying Liverpool are going to be in there to, to win the league next season, I'm not too sure, man. Because when I'm seeing the business that Newcastle are doing, Arsenal, Man, Man United are probably going to do some more business there, mm. Chelsea... I'm not too sure, man. I'm not too sure. I think you're just going to get players that fall under that, um, in all honesty. But mm. I could be wrong, but that's how I look at it. Yeah, what, 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 yeah. you know what, while Man City go and sign Kovacic and sign, try to sign Gavardiol and bidding for Dickon Rice, Liverpool are going for project players. No, but is, Mo, what, it, what it is, uh-huh. but what it is, when I've just, and I've realised like last couple of weeks, is we all believe Liverpool need a rebuild and there's a massive rebuild needed and we need this player, that player, that player. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, there's a massive, massive cohort in the club, whether it's the manager, some of the players, someone high up that just goes and thinks, last season was just a blip. We know our level. Look yeah. at these games against, um, against. look how we performed against City. Look, look how we performed against United. Look, look how we what, performed look against what Arsenal. Curtis Jones did. Look what Curtis Jones did in the last two months of the season. One, 100%. That thinking, it's, it's, and, it's and, and, you, and you look at it and you look at it and, it's, and it, we're in a sticky situation because we need this midfield rebuild. But it's not like we haven't got any midfielders. If Kefren Taram comes in, we've got eight midfielders. Eight. City don't have eight midfielders to go and rotate. But we've got eight. So if we've got eight midfielders, they're looking at it and saying, no, we've got the players in. It's now about the right personnel, the right quality. I look at McAllister. Would Liverpool have gotten McAllister if he, was, if he wasn't 35 million? If he was 70 million, like Caicedo, are Liverpool going in for him? No. Nope. It's, it was it was a, it, there was an opportunity there and we went and took it. Gakpo, why did we purchase him when we all needed a midfielder? In because there was an opportunity that presented itself. Oh wow, we can get him for that price. Yeah, we can get him. If Gakpo was eighty million, are we buying him? Nah. I nah, think you sell we... Gakpo in a couple of years, bro. I tell you, make a profit on Gakpo. A couple of years, your Gakpo's stock is gonna maybe get higher. And then it's but all about the why. profit. It's all about the profit at that, Jerry, that, that I don't know if you Liverpool fans have seen that picture of Enzo, Jude and Casado together. Yeah, they were all linked to Liverpool. So that's the problem that you guys have. Do you know what I mean? You're not really getting but, but, but look at, that, that move the needle. Look like at that, that drop. Really. Look, look at that drop. Like, I'm not going to say drop. I don't, be, I don't like being disingenuous because these players might turn out to be good players. But I'm sorry, but... You're yeah. telling me that you were in for all of these guys and you've gone from that to then say, you know what, we're going to get Kefren Turam, we're going to get Alexis McAllister and you know what, throw in Gravenberch. That team is then going to help you to to challenge. Yeah, to the top four maybe. Like, we'll challenge for the top four. That's about it. Especially sorry. when other people are improving. No, no, sorry, I interrupted you. Sorry. Hmm. Uh, we've got some super chats here. First one says, the report claims Liverpool will wait until Turam's involvement at the under-21 Euros has ended before advancing with him their first bid. Well, that that's all well and good unless he goes there and has a a, a top class tournament, and suddenly that price is it eighty rises, now. Is it eighty now? It, it rises again. I, I would. I get what. Honestly, you're a great guy. I, I get what the report says, but yeah, I would. I would try and get it done now.